This is a Remington 770. I had quite a few people ask me to review the rifle and I had the good fortune of finding one and um, this is the 770 much like the 783 is an extremely accurate rifle. I think it's safe to say that barrel making technology has probably been perfected so it's not hard for the manufacturers to get bullets to arrive on the target in roughly the same place. They guarantee half minute of angle or one minute of angle with factory loads or with reloads or what you know whatever terminology their lawyers tell them to use. So I looked at the 770 and I try to arrive on the scene fairly objective. We've got a typical polymer stock. The trigger guard has kind of an unusual straight aspect to it. It's got a removable magazine. I, I, I think that's a good magazine. It says short action on it in case you've got any doubts. It's in 308. So I looked at that and I thought well that's pretty good above average actually. And the polymer stock, uh, I think they put some foam in there. I didn't take off the recoil pad to check but it sounds like they put foam in. So it looks a little, sounds a little less hollow. Safety worked, everything was fine. Anyway, this is obviously leading up to a point because I think it's maybe not the best rifle. This is the bolt that sits in here. I'd want to put it in because the bolt handle fell off. So this was in here. And with the bolt handle in, uh, like that, I can't tip it down, it'll fall out. But with the bolt handle in, it's actually a pretty good rifle. And the thing is, the bolt handle is separate from the bolt body. Now this is very common with modern rifles, unfortunately. Um, Mausers are one piece, and Tika 65s and 55s are one piece. Because you all know how it is. You go hunting, or you're doing something else, and the cartridge is stuck. Not badly stuck, maybe there's some snow, maybe there's a piece of straw or grass or whatever. So you have to apply some pressure to the bolt handle. That's why it's there actually. And of course on this one, you now I didn't have any ice or snow or anything. I don't know if you can make sense of what I'm trying to show you. The reason it looked more dramatic here, so this broke off. So um, this is the bolt head which is held in place by a pin. And actually, before filming, I gathered all these parts, but I don't know. I, I dropped the pin somewhere. It's on the floor. I have this magnet thing for finding parts on the floor, but I couldn't find it anyway. It's there somewhere. And then the firing pin is not bad. It just kind of, and the spring, it sits in here. And then you, you twist this way or that way, whatever. And th so that way it works. And there's a plastic bolt shroud that goes, it actually sits on the whoops, it sits on that spring thing. And all together it works. And all those guns I showed you, those black rifles, like the Axis, and they have all kinds of names, but they all kind of look like this one. They're very similar to the 770. Now it happens that this one had the bolt handle that came off, but they're all capable of accomplishing that um, as well. So when you buy those discount rifles, uh, it's quite possible this is what you end up with. Some of you will write me, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to take this to a friend of mine. I forget what he has. A MIG welder or a TIG welder. I get them confused. So we'll have to position this correctly, get it all, you know, in a jig or something, and then carefully weld this back on. And when it's welded back on, it's going to be a good rifle again. But I thought I would show this to you uh, because a lot of people are buying actually the 783 and all those other guns, the Axis, are selling by the tens of thousands. And a lot of them end up looking like this. And you don't see them because yours is holding together and you're at home. Uh, but I do see them and I do hear from people with these things. Also, these trigger guards, uh, people fall down happens all the time. It happened to me many times. Uh, if you've got a steel trigger guard or even a sheet metal trigger guard, you can straighten it out. 
and you're probably going to have at least a usable rifle. These, I, I have these, I've seen, I don't know how many pictures the people send me, what do I do? So this thing is either broken here or here, or it's broken both places. So, you know, I bought every kind of super glue, epoxies, but there's something about this type of polymer, or maybe I just have a bad system, you can tell me. I can't get those polymers to stick. So then you're left with all kinds of contrivances, attaching sheet metal to try to get the trigger guard to sit. But I mean, how hard is it to actually just make a good trigger guard in the first place? So uh, meaning of the video, they can make great barrels. I think this spring is very good. And I think the firing pin is probably okay. This is not acceptable. This is some kind of a tube, tubular steel with this thing either brazed on or silver soldered, I don't know, whatever it is. This is plastic. That's on a lot of them. Aluminum is not much better. If you're making a bolt shroud, it should be steel. The bolt head, it's fine if it's removable, but this pin falls out right away. If you take the firing pin out, it falls, and it can fall on my floor, or it could fall in the snow. Either, either way, it's a pain. This is not bad. But if you're making the magazine out of steel, may as well make the whole magazine out of steel. This plastic, you get below zero plastic. Polymers behave differently. You may, you may not be aware of this because you're in the southern states or whatever, it's warm. Other places, I've had these come in, they look like spider webs. Not, not that anybody's driven on them or anything, they just get really cold and crack. So, I don't know, same message from the beginning of the channel, better to buy a used pre-64 that's probably too expensive so get a, get a used model 70 or any of those guns these polymer ones i think they have a best before date uh, that's my hunch the barrels are going to be good they can take pressure the locking will be good for the time that the rifle's alive but then i think the end story is this that that things are going to fail with these rifles that's from what I can see, I think that that's safe to say it's true. And probably the price reflects, as usual, what you're paying for. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm a broken record when it comes to this stuff. That's why I focus on these used rifles, because we're in some kind of a void here, where you, the new rifles, unless you pay a fortune, are just generally not worth buying, which isn't very good, because these companies need to make money. They have employees, so they should just return uh, I think, to making good rifles. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching. I'm glad if you can endure my opinions. Uh, please join me on Patreon and um, Instagram and um, subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.